They did a whole episode on the Mothman. Like, how many times has the Mothman been done? This is the person whose whole career is based on doing the same video over and over again. So I'm trying to get myself back into the groove of making foodie beauty videos. Obviously she's meant to be going on holiday very soon so I'm assuming there will be something to react to. So I thought I'd get back into it with her little mukbang that she's done this evening. I just want to preface this video and say that this video is on like nearly 1.5 speed and it's still really slow on her part so I apologise. But I just need you to see how awful her video edits are because there's no editing. Anyways, let's have a watch. I've been watching the new season of Unsolved Mysteries, but I came across this mystery of um, a young guy of uh, 19 years of age who went, who disappeared, and just the, the way he disappeared was really, really bizarre, and I really hope that this guy is found, but the, the conditions in which he disappeared were just so weird, um, and I have my other phone here to look at, the, because I don't have a good memory with like little details. So rather than putting some effort in and creating a script for this story, I'm just going to read off of a Wikipedia page and stuff my face. It's the case of Brandon Swanson. Um, he was 19 and he was from Marshall, Minnesota. And on May 14th, 2008, just after midnight, um, maybe I'm just completely out of the loop, but is this a thing? Are there true crime channels that do mukbangs while they're talking? Because this seems really insensitive. And I don't know about you, but when I'm eating, the last thing I want to be doing is watching true crime. To see that something awful has happened to someone would make me feel sick and I wouldn't have an appetite. This just seems so disrespectful. And the fact that she's, again, putting no effort into her video and is just literally reading it off of her phone. Just, you know, typical foodie beauty. He drove his car into a ditch. Survived that without a scratch. So he called his parents. He didn't know where he was, but he thought that he was near a town called Lind. I'm guessing also Minnesota. Heaven forbid, just pause in the video for a second so that you can have a look and not sound completely clueless. And his parents were like, okay, we're gonna come get you, just stay where you are. So he stayed where he was for quite a while on the phone with his parents. And, you know, occasionally the phone would there would be interference and stuff, but he stayed on the phone. And he stayed on the phone with his parents until, you know, they couldn't find him. You know, they had their lights on, they were looking around in the direction where he thought he was. And they couldn't find his car or uh, Brandon on the side of the road at all. So Brandon um, decided to start walking towards some lights, toward, he thought, you know, the towards the town of Lind. And told his dad to just pick him up in a uh, known um, parking lot of an establishment. I think it was either a restaurant or a bar. I'm really sorry, but I have to keep pointing this out. She literally has all the answers in her hand and she can't even look down just to actually give a factual story. She just has to be really vague because it's easier for her. So his dad was like, okay, and head over to, towards that area. Now, Brandon was walking through a field, apparently. I think I saw somewhere he was walking through like a dark field. So he started walking towards Lynn and what he thought was Lynn and 47 minutes later, he's all the while he's still on the phone with his parents, his parents hear, oh shit, and then silence, until the parents had to finally disconnect the call and try to call again. But imagine, like, you know, you hear, oh shit, and then silence for a while, and you're like, Brandon, Brandon, and there's no answer. Like, you know, it was just so eerie because... Before all the foodie supporters get on my case for the fact that I'm having a go at her, but she's actually trying to make some sort of content... The fact that she is stuffing her face while she's talking about other people's misfortune is not content. They didn't hear anything else. Now it turns out Brandon was actually his cell signal, his cell phone records showed that he was actually not going where he thought he was going. He was actually going 40 kilometers, about 25 miles in the opposite direction. To where he thought he was going so no wonder no one could find him he was coming from like a party like end of s spring semester party not even a magician can make these noodles disappear as quick as foodie does so people were wondering if maybe he was intoxicated and disoriented 
but his parents said he sounded very coherent, not inebriated at all. Plus, he shouldn't have been driving if he was drinking. Um, but people still do. But since he's never found, there's no way to test his alcohol level. So, so in the morning, his parents reported him missing to the Lynn police. Who were like, just kind of like, wait a while, this happens with young people. You know, maybe he's just out somewhere, yada, yada, yada. So the search because of that started for him late. Um, There's some controversy about that, about starting searches late, like waiting a while just because he's an adult. Like, I think they passed a Brandon law, which means like- Sorry lovelies, but I'm really on one tonight. She's so f***ing infuriating. This law has been set because the parents of Brandon don't want this to happen to someone else. And you know how easy it is to find out about this law? Literally a search of Google, it will come up straight away. So I'm going to tell you what the law actually is. Because heaven forbid we actually get some facts out of her that might actually help people in the future because why would she help people when she can just benefit herself? So Brandon's law was set up by his parents Annette and Brian and what it means is that law enforcement have to take missing person reports without delay, conduct a preliminary investigation, notify other law enforcement agencies, seek additional information if the missing person is not found within 30 days and provide legal protection for missing adults. The idea of losing your son and never knowing where he is is heartbreaking and the fact that this couple have done this and have worked so hard to get something passed is amazing. See how easy that is, foodie? Just to put more than 1% of effort in? Police have to take into account certain factors before deciding on starting a search. Because in my opinion, like, okay, yeah, let's say, you know, he just didn't come home. Like it was the next morning, they found that he didn't come home. Maybe he just like got drunk, passed out and didn't come home right away. That's a little different than him kind of you know being in a car crash and then saying oh shit and then nothing you know like to me they should have started the investigation right away i'm sorry does fbi stand for foodie beauty investigates because i don't think it does um so they should take into those factors of the situation but like case by case basis not just like a one size fits all kind of deal Oh, and if there are any foodie supporters here, I would just like to say, her doing stuff like this, where she just leaves you with absolute rubbish in between when she's actually speaking and she's not editing anything out, is a massive middle finger to you, and especially to the people that are dumb enough to be paying her money to speak in her chat. This is awful. She doesn't care what she's putting out. She needs money, and she will put out whatever she needs to to make that money, no matter how little it is. They also had sniffer dogs that led them around the Yellow Medicine River, but nobody was ever found in the river. Um, there was no other evidence to suggest that he did fall in the river because um, his last known location was near the Yellow Medicine River, apparently. My thought on that is, wouldn't they hear a splash? Wouldn't they hear him calling for help as he's drowning or, you know what I mean? It's the, it's the dead silence after he goes missing, after he says those words. It's the dead silence after he says those words that really just like- It's one thing when she doesn't finish her own sentences when she's talking about stuff we don't care about and she's doing a mukbang just for feeders. But when she's talking about a story like this and she can't even finish a sentence because she has to eat everything straight away, it's just next level awful. I'm so eerie. And if he was grabbed, wouldn't you hear a struggle? Wouldn't you hear a call out for help? <laughs> it's the eerie silence. I don't know. The whole thing is bizarre. Very delicious food. Well, this is definitely a very specific niche.
hey, do you love hearing bad things that have happened to people and also really love hearing about food reviews right in the middle of it? Look no further than the Foodie Beauty channel. I hope sincerely that they do find answers someday. So going back to true crime, you know when people are interrogated and they'll be like, oh, honestly, it wasn't me, I'm being honest. And that's a sign that they're not being honest because a normal person doesn't need to say I'm being honest when they're being honest. When she said, I sincerely hope that they find him, I did not believe that for a second. And that's what it felt like to me. We've seen from her past that compassion is not something that comes easily to Foodie Beauty. The theory that he ran away, wanted to go missing, is kind of bizarre to me. It doesn't make sense. Because why would he crash his car? Or why would he call his parents to find him? That makes zero sense. <laughs> You know what else makes zero sense? Eating like this when you're morbidly obese. So they haven't like ruled out foul play, but there's just no evidence to suggest that there was foul play. So the whole thing is just bizarre. And I find when people just like disappear seemingly into thin air, with no evidence to suggest what happened to this person, not even a clue. To me, that's very bizarre, very bizarre. Um, and to me, it's bizarre that he disappeared so quietly, you know, after saying those words, it's just weird to me. So. <sighs> the new season of Unsolved Mysteries, I've watched it because I'm a fan, but the new season is probably the weakest one, season uh, four. In my opinion, they did a whole episode on the Mothman. Like, how many times has the Mothman been done? Says the person whose whole career is based on doing the same video over and over again. Not only that, they did an episode on the original series with Robert Stack. We don't need another one. Okay. Maybe for me, cryptids are not that interesting. Like, I used to be so afraid of Bigfoot. And if I saw Bigfoot today, I would be freaked out. But I kind of don't believe in any of that. Although, I don't dispute that people do see these things. It's just like... The Mothman... Could kind of be anything. You know? A huge crane or... I don't know. Could be anything big that squawks. I really don't get it. Same. I do not get how you have any viewers. I found that episode boring. If you, if you like the Mothman, okay, but <laughs> for me it was kind of boring. Um, Obviously. I failed my challenge of eating everything in my house, but we don't have that much left, really. Most of what we have can wait. I'll cook up the veggies tomorrow. We have eggs. I might freeze my butter. Mm. Butter. <laughs> um, these ketchup chips are the best. Now, if you like this kind of content, And you want me to like do once a week or something a true crime 
Murder Mystery Monday. Oh, for the love of... She keeps doing this. She keeps trying to say that she'll stick to a routine and that she'll do a certain thing on certain days and she won't do it. So she'll just let everyone down and everybody lets her get away with it. Why does she keep doing this? It's just a cycle. Let me know. When I'm traveling, of course, I'll put it on hold, but... She literally promised something, like, what, five seconds ago? And she's already saying why she's going to not do it. That was delicious. Um... Decent size sub, actually. It was like a six inch. It wasn't like a four inch. Will Salah only let you order four inch subs now because he feels inadequate? Bless his heart. Oh, well, it was cheaper. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess that's it. Thank goodness she's going on holiday because this is getting painful. I decided not to edit out the moments when she's not talking because I just want you to see how little effort she puts into her videos. She could have easily made this like an eight, nine minute video. But instead, she dragged it out by just sitting there in silence and staring at her food lovingly. I'm not going to be completely negative. I appreciate that Foodie's trying to do things that would make her videos more interesting. I just think she needs to separate the food and the like true crime aspect because it just doesn't sit right with me. And I don't think it would sit right with a lot of people. I wouldn't like to see this person talking about my son's story while they're stuffing their face and prioritising the food over the story. If she sat down and wrote a script and then edited the video properly, this could actually be quite a good idea for her channel but she cannot do both things together. True crime is a very oversaturated market, so you've really got to be good at what you're doing to even give it a try. I'd love to know your opinion on whether you think true crime and food reviews slash mukbangs go together, because as I've made quite clear, I don't think that works, but maybe I'm just completely on the wrong side of YouTube. As always, thank you so much for watching my video and getting to this part of it. Obviously, you know how much you'll mean to me, and I will do my best to get a new video up soon. Bye.